let's go ahead. And Adam, let's kick things off here with New York. And uh, we got a little bit more deeper information here about the whole plan in New York. So we'll start with appropriate credit to Tom Precious of the Buffalo News, who was the first to report a lot of this information. But we have now seen the Matrix. Are you ready for the Matrix? Uh, There's the uh, New York sports betting tax matrix. Um, The red pill apparently is, do you want to pay 64% on your taxes? Uh, And the blue pill takes you right back to where you are right now, which is nowhere down the rabbit hole. Um, So what we've seen is that the top bid is in, in New York. We don't know who placed the top bid, but the fact that we are now seeing tax rates means that the New York State Gaming Commission has selected its top bid and now other bids who submitted lower tax rates now have the information on what the tax rate will be to decide if they want to match that and be a part of the new york sports betting ecosystem i could sit here and try to game out the entire chart for you in terms of how many platform providers and how many sports book operators etc etc just understand this at the bare minimum that's required by law two platform providers for sportsbook operators, the tax rate on gross gaming revenue would be 64%. And in case you're wondering, yes, that is by far the highest in the country, um, even when you factor in lotteries and management contracts and, and everything like that. Um, the one thing I would say is that it's not likely to be just two platform providers and four sportsbook operators. As you put more platform providers and more operators into the state, the sliding scale goes down on that tax rate. Uh, The way we game it out, it kind of looks like 50% is one of the more likely numbers of where this lands. That was the threshold that former Governor Andrew Cuomo set before he resigned. And uh, we should find out more in the next few weeks here about who placed those bids, who was scored highest, and who actually will get a license in New York. Dustin, the question that I keep getting asked from people in New York is not just when do I get to do this, but who am I going to get this with like who am i going to actually get to to bet with and i know that we don't know this for sure but can we at least give them can we at least give those people some sort of idea as to who they may be able to place their bets with i got nothing i got nothing we have no we have we have literally no idea who's bid who made this bid who is going to be accepted um you know like adam said there's you can look at this matrix which is way more complicated of a concept than it needed to be they mm-hmm. created this this giant chart that nobody what makes your eyes glaze over when you look at it here's the here's what it blows down to small number of operators 64 percent tax rate larger number of tax ra- operators probably around 50 percent uh unlimited number of ta- operators 35 percent uh, the most likely thing is that you look at this thing. The thing that makes the most sense when I look at it is twelve operators at fifty percent. That's the, like they, there's no reason for them to add more operators to go down to thirty five percent. There's only I think we determined fourteen people actually put bit operators who put bids in. So you're looking at at least a robust number of of operators probably being in New York again. Although I'm also assuming that people in New York are rational actors, uh, as we all know. That's probably not the case right now. They are they they, are, they the most rational thing would be to get the most operators at the highest tax rate to maximize the market. Um, so that would, that would be the 12 plus 50%. Um, so in that scenario, you know, if, if, if we're wishing for the best scenario, uh, that's probably it. And that means pretty much everybody who, you, the big names you know out there, DraftKings, FanDuel, Caesars, uh, BetMGM, Barstool, they all get in, plus a bunch of people that you may or may not have heard of and smaller players, Bet365, Bet which is in relatively f- small number of states, but uh, has been very interested in, in New York. So I... D- I don't. I wish I could say you're going to get a robust number of of operators, and but there's also this world where they say, oh, more tax m- money is better, and we're going to take that. So in that case, it probably would be, you know, I would guess it's the big guys because if they're taking one of the smaller mm-hmm. operators at, or one of the the other one of the smaller groups at 64, percent I think that's that would be a, a basically a nightmarish decision for New York. Now, Adam, we know that. I mean, listen, I think people. People see these numbers, and if you're not really inside the bubble, you don't really understand that sports betting in general is just very small margin business. And there is, once you start start talking about licensing fees and, of course, just the cost of operation and and paying employees and taxes and this other, it's, it's not a lot of money 
that actually is left over at the end of the day when this is all said and done, if they're taxed at 50%, let's just assume that that is where this ends up settling. If they're taxed at 50%, is this a sustainable thing? Because, I mean, you'd think like, okay, maybe with the with the amount of people in New York, if there was only three or four, maybe even if they're taxed 4%, there's enough of that to go around. Everyone's going to be fine. Tons of money, tons of players, tons of people, all that. But if we're talking 12, 14 at 50%, do we think that is sustainable? The short answer is no. By the way, stop reading my Slack chats because uh, we were actually working on exactly that story uh, oh. at LSR. So- sorry. On, uh, kind of breaking <laughs> down the numbers and, and uh, you know, putting out there for people like, listen, do you understand what it means? Then it's a tease, fact, Adam. It's just a tease then. Okay, I, I did you, a tease. Do you know yeah. what, Matt Brown, if there's one thing I've always <laughs> known about you, it's that you're a tease. Um, I know. So let's talk about what it means for sustainability, right? Um, Pennsylvania has an, a 36% effective tax rate. But nobody's paying 36% right now because you can deduct promotional spend. And so all of those free bets and all of the customer acquisition costs that are going in in a state like Pennsylvania can be deducted. So they're not paying 36%. They will eventually when they're not bonusing and promoing at these levels, but they're not right now. In New York, that's not an option. You're paying the full amount. Um, You are paying tax on every dollar of that revenue. They kind of used their second mover status to learn from other states that allowed this to happen. So the sustainability of that appears to be not high because as we know, 5% is roughly the historical average for how much sports books are going to win. So if you're to take 5% of gross gaming revenue, immediately cut it in half and then start adding in overhead costs, really it has to be a marketing play at that point, right? To have your brand out in front of people because if you're trying to hold 1%, 2% on being there, the volume that you have to do is massive, just massive. And and it's possible, don't get me wrong, it's not impossible to do that kind of volume in New York, otherwise people wouldn't be playing the Mm -hmm. game, but it's a hell of a challenge. The other piece that I would mention here is just matching the tax rate. If you didn't bid the top tax rate, Just agreeing to match it isn't even enough to guarantee you're getting a license. It's still up to the discretion of the commission to decide whether you're getting into the market. So think about if you're a 365 and a standalone bid, when you agree to match the tax rate, you don't know if you're agreeing to match 64 or 50 or 35. You're agreeing blindly to however many get into the market. The, The... the lack of cost certainty and having a 30% difference in what the tax rate might be. I, you can hear my voice go up saying it. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's interesting. Isn't it? When you're gaming this out too, like you could, like, I don't know. I have a whole lot of idea, but you could also just be, you could be counting on New York at some point fixing this mess. Right. And some people are, I don't know if that's the best decision, but you could be saying, uh, overpaying for access now so that when they do fix it and get rid mm-hmm. of the ridiculous tax rates and open up the market, you have a, a, a first mover advantage. You have a lead. You've already acquired a bunch of customers, whatever. Like that's, that's at least a possibility in the background here is that you just you eat it now. You, you count on the legislature that doesn't, didn't like what governor Cuomo did. Cuomo's out of office. Like maybe we fix it. Like, is that, I don't know if my, my, you're, you're gambling there too, though, that they're actually good at New York can actually be functional and fix what is uh, not the best system for, for doing this. But if you're doing that, you're saying, okay, I'm going to overpay now. I'm going to get, I'm going to accept whatever tax rate now. And at least I'm in. And then I can, mm-hmm. and like, like Adam said, this is, this is, I, I feel like maybe we've cried wolf on the past, but there is no, you're not making money in New York at this rate. If you're pay right. you're immediate, if you're pay, immediately paying 64% of your revenue, like you're not making money in New York. You have to, you, your all of your money is going into access, market access. There, there maybe there's a little bit, but it's like New York then becomes a state that, ter- that you care it's about. It's not in a golden goose like we were right. Thought, like, I, I, you're right, yeah. Like we thought in terms that, of okay, raw dollars, up, yeah, right, right. It's right. A, it's it is a, like a, you can you can almost boil it down to it's a marketing play. You have to be in, uh, you have to mm-hmm. be in New York, or else what are you even doing, right? That's the maybe, maybe that. That is is all of the value then tied up in uh, that and the, and the potential future for New York? I don't know, but it, it's I, I I can tell you nobody is getting rich if you ha- if you have to agree to the sixty four percent rate and that's what they end up with. Nobody's making money. You're you're placeholding doing it's a marketing play, whatever it is. It's not to make a lot of money in New York. Keep it and uh, Adam, Matt, before you yep. yeah just just one thing to add to what Dustin was saying. If you're planning on it being fixed legislatively, there are regulatory fixes that have to happen too because. There are triggers, and I don't remember them exactly right now, and I apologize for that, but essentially there are triggers in the tax rates that you bid that correlate to the length of the license that you're being given. The higher tax rate you bid, the longer license uh, that you get. I believe the top term was 10 years. So you would essentially 
um, be coming in knowing that you could lo be locked into that tax structure for a number of years based upon the current regulations. Again, regulations can change and, and laws can change, um, but it, it's all part of the gamble. Yeah, and I mean, listen, they know that some of that money is funneling out of the state into New Jersey. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. But, I mean, this is this is something where, hey, look, if you have a bad product, which this might lead to a bad product, given what we're what we've seen in all these other states where the guys are, you know, the, the operators are super aggressive. They're super player friendly at first, giving all kinds of bonuses, all kinds of different things like that. We haven't seen these crazy, crazy uh, juice, uh, you know, the uh, juice wars and stuff going on that we saw in a couple of the other states, Adam. And, you know, look, it, it may be in New York. You don't get those people staying home. They're probably, you know, at least a portion of them are still crossing across the border to go to Jersey because it's still just a better product. And, you know, you have to be realistic about that, right? Like, you have to be realistic about the fact that you're dealing with a different market in New York than you're dealing with in other states because of New Jersey, because of the mm -hmm. fact that you already have people who are established in the legal market. It's not like trying to go get all the offshore customers and bring them home or activate new people who've never been sports bettors. You have a fairly dedicated group of people who are, you know, in some cases biking mm -hmm. across the George Washington Bridge uh, to go place their bets every day. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's going to be interesting for us to follow here and see how this ends up all playing out.